Next on stage is we have a fireside discussion with Alex from Singularity Net. Singularity Net is um, one of the premier decentralized AI data, data marketplaces, and with my colleague uh, Jan Bo from the Filecoin Foundation. So let's give it up for Alex and Jan. Thanks, Potter. Uh, yeah. Really excited to be here with Alex. Um, this is a long time coming. Uh, we, we spent a, a good three to four months discussing this, and really excited to be announcing this, uh, uh, some of these new developments within the ecosystem at this stage. Uh, I'll leave it up to Alex to uh, introduce himself first. Uh, yeah, hello, guys. Thank you for watching and inviting, first of all, to the Brussels. Um, my name is Alex. I, I'm the banker, uh, and I started my career as auditor. So it was very interesting and boring in that time, but now I'm in crypto, and we are delivering and uh, the strategy initiatives uh, around single arithmetic ecosystem. So my team is value engineers. One of them is here, Alejandro, and we are designing the uh, new cool strategy implementation for single Archnet, which I hope gives some uh, details today about that. Uh, so my background initially goes from the data. I started my career as one of the earliest chief data officer in Russia. Um, also, I have a finance uh, degree, and so I can actually discuss any disc topics around business data and adoption of this for the centralized aspects, for sure. Well, um, Singularity Net is also synonymous with um, AGI, uh, Artificial General Intelligence. Could you let us know more about the developments of uh, AGI within the Singularity Net ecosystem? Yes, that's true. Like we're still holding the monopoly of traffic of, from Wikipedia for AGI, yeah. because Ben he has invented this term uh, several years ago, and we we're doing a lot of there. So, but AGI is a very complex uh, framework itself. So uh, there is no very stable architecture around AGI. But I could say there are some elements which are very important to say. For example, AI agents. They talk one to each other, so specialized AI domain specific language. There are also knowledge graph infrastructure, which is very important to fix hallucination. I had a question here about fake truths or, or some kind of misleading information. That's all happening also in large language models, and this can be fixed with a long term memory based on the knowledge graphs. Uh, so Singularity Net itself is not just designing the AGI, it's actually designing the infrastructure for AI companies to bring the centralized AGI on this infrastructure. Yeah, that's great. Um, you spoke about the knowledge layer for AGI. Uh, could you let us know a little bit more about uh, the knowledge graph and how it aids the, the ML process or the <laughs> AI agent process? Yeah, so a year ago, we uh, uh, dis discussed with uh, Ben and, uh, and the senior management uh, the, the idea of the new strategy of single Artnet, what it could be beyond of AI marketplace, which is like our uh, one of the core product was. Uh, and we came up with a general understanding that so existing data structure of the of the Web3 is not enough to use it for uh, de designing AI services. So we said, okay, if it's not enough, what, is there any place for a semantic layer on the top of this? And we realized that there could be a semantic layer. It could be decentralized semantic layer, and uh, we designed special tools for that. So this semantic layer, we start calling a knowledge layer. Uh, knowledge, it means a, a new type of new form of storing the data as an asset. So uh, literally, uh, the, the knowledge graph, it's, a, it's just an extension of the databases in the appropriate way. And you use this extension for a very particular task. So I would say any aligner logic, you still can use like SQL, right? <laughs> but for non-liner logic like AI reasoning, for example, it's more efficient to use knowledge graphs. So we decided, OK, let's build uh, the knowledge layer on the top of the Web3 and make it decentralized and invite really nice partners. Yeah, that's amazing. I'm going to talk about how Falcoin is going to be part of this picture. Um, and it's great that SingularityNet is uh, using the knowledge graph to extend the context of uh, the LOMs or, or even uh, do it simultaneously with the RECs to um, expand the, the context space. Um, what Falcoin can do here is uh, we are partnering with SingularityNet to ensure we can do backups for the knowledge graph. Uh, and the second part is to ensure that whatever data or the data that's going to be ingested into the knowledge graph to form those ontologies 
are going to be uh, immutable or at least proven that they have not been changed in any way. So this creates this uh, relevant data source or this uh, very um, trustworthy data source for machine learning models. Uh, moving on to the next part, I, I recently, I mean, recently there's big news and development within the Web3 space. You guys have launched this uh, artificial uh, uh, super uh, alliance. Um, could you talk more about that and what, what are the ecosystem developments? Yes, uh, I think that's one of the major events in AI industry, in the AI category of the Web3 industry. So what we see, uh, I mean, I, I will like not discussing today economics, okay, for sake of clarity. <laughs> Uh, because uh, my, my goal is build the business and adopt and run the adoption of the products. The whole idea is actually we are merging together our efforts with the major players like Fetch and the Ocean Protocol together around the centralization of the infrastructure for uh, AGI and uh, ASI actually, because ASI is a, it's the next level of the, uh, designing the AGI itself. And, we see that this next level will require much more advanced tools. That's why actually it requires a very common efforts around us because we see that existing centralized, I would say, problem of the, of the big tech companies uh, um, cannot be ignored and can be fixed with the one player. We have to be together as a decentralized community and have to be together as a response for big tech company competition. Yeah, and that brings to the topic of like AI ethics. I think that's also very important as we move towards AGI. Um, Filecoin and, uh, and Snet is working together to create these AI ethics, um, but also I want to hear your thoughts about how important AI ethics is in this space right now with all these projects coming on board. Yeah, it's a, it's a, so there are several uh, camps, yeah. right? So it's like in politics, there are rights, there are lefts, uh, there are extensive acceleration, there are defensive acceleration, and ethics is quite different and distinct for those camps. And the discussion on ethics actually, first of all, starts that there are no control button, okay? So that's the whole point. There is no control button <laughs> for ASI. <laughs> so if you, th if you think there is a control button, just... <laughs> try to imagine that there is no control button. What is the world where there is no control button? How the AI and AGI side should work there and how we should develop our trust on this and what uh, mutual trust should be, the, like loyalty, I would say, of those AI, AGI species should be for the human. And this is very um, bold questions, very bold questions that require discussion, not only IT folks, it's required discussion from the psychologist, from the anthropologist, right. uh, from the poli politics, and actually, uh, because on the different estimates, like Ben Gortzel said, 80% um, of the jobs will be cut from the adoption of ASI. 80% of the jobs, what, th what those people will do? Uh, Sam Altman proposed uh, some idea of the UBI, Universal ba Basic Income, which is part of the ethical framework. We discussed some ideas about flourishing credits, and recently we uh, joined uh, as a partner with Humanity 2.0. That's a Vatican organization, and we become the member of the AI Ethics Committee there. And that's why we, our goal is to invite a very broad discussion for this topic, a very broad discussion, and see what the camps are and what the rules are, and is there any particular um, instruments that can enhance this discussion and stabilize it because like the way it's happening now in in a centralized environment you're just receiving the prompt or response and that's all right you can't complain about that i tried complaining about the airline tickets recently to emirates and they just ignored me like completely <laughs> so imagine what's happening if you will complain about agi right and um with, with this, uh, we're coming to a close, but uh, recently you also just acquired a, a pretty impressive client. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, actually, so um, the PIN environment for us is, is a very new industry, very new area. We have several product projects inside the ecosystem, which is like Gem Galaxy, but it's our first steps, and we realized that uh, the knowledge graphs and the centralized distributed atom space, we call this a very specific choir language, can be used also in corporate environment. And we see our efforts should go with one of the biggest industries, which is the construction industry. Uh, it feels like together with our partners, we can explore and adopt of the knowledge graphs for the BIM, for the green BIM. It's a construction software used for managing the process cycle. 
And it also creates the ability to trace uh, the data assets and ensure that they are meeting all the requirements for the decarbonization, sustainable living, and so on. And Jan mentioned about the um, archives. And the, the whole idea is actually it's a very innovative solution today. There are no archives for the, for the knowledge graphs and for the LLMs, if you like turn off, you have to retrain again. And I think uh, our mutual collaboration here will come up really with a very, very interesting product that will be very successful for uh, corporates. And that's why I see it's very like interesting bundle for the PIN. Yeah, I think it's, good. it's definitely going to be really exciting. Um, so for the partnership, we're going to just sum it up on what we're going to do for the next six months. We are going to co-develop a solution to back up the knowledge graph, to archive the knowledge graph. The second part is to also to enhance AI ethics. We will, uh, because Falcon itself is very useful as a provenance layer. Uh, once you post the data onto IPFS or onto Falcon, it's immutable. Generally, it proves that um, the data has not been changed. So that's another area we're going to. We are going to delve into ethics. Um, and we're going to supercharge this and speed this up uh, for the next six months and uh, see where we are uh, in this Yeah, I, I like the idea about the value of the data. So not standing there by the window and hearing the previous speaker, I just realized, like, you know, what is actually the value of the data? Have you ever asked yourself, like, you're paying for storage, IPFS or Google or whatever, Amazon. Yeah, yeah. And what is the value? Like, I'm paying like $200 a year. Is it worse than that? Like, yeah. because, and it feels me, uh, it's similar if I'm buying the Bitcoin today, right? I believe in that, that it will value a lot in the future. So it feels like the discussion about the value and the data, it's more also about changing the mindset that this value is maybe zero today for some reason, but it's definitely not a zero tomorrow. Yeah, with this, I think we will conclude uh, this session. Uh, Porter. Yeah, okay. We'll just, yeah, we'll pass it back to you, Porter. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you. Thanks. All right, thanks.